Hello everybody, welcome to the Sound Test Room. Today we are taking a look at the marvellous Beathawk from UVI and how to use it and set it up as an AUV3. So it's a, it's a brilliant groove box music production station most of you already know about Beathawk. The genius of this is that it's like having a door within a door. So this will work with Cubasis or whatever it'll load in AUV3. So this sound here, this is one of the cool reasons to use Beathawk as an AUV3, right? Because you can access all the brilliant sounds that you can buy from within Beathawk. I mean, and there are Tons of great things, right? I'll, I'll go through some sounds in a bit and, you know, using them and things. But first of all, a couple of use cases, right? Okay, so you'll see I've got these four turned down. These are running complete song projects, these two. And these two are just running patterns. So if I turn the volume up for both of these, and I'm going to go into this one. And you'll see here that all these patterns here that I've got, these are empty. You can see, no, there's no data been recorded. And this one, however, has stuff put into them. Now, if I start my transport off, if I rewind this to the beginning and look at this one as well, it's going to take this off song mode and go to patterns. You'll see that I have five patterns right now. As soon as I press play on a transport, both of these are going to start playing. Which is awesome, right? So if I want to trigger this pattern the next time it comes in. Or stop it. Just stop it on the next beat round. So I could go and say, well, okay, that's great. I'm going to start this pattern now. You'll hear those chords are the same as I had the choir playing in this version. Right. Now this does have a song project associated with it, but I'll close this for now. Close these two down. And now I'll bring up these two. Right. So both of these are a, are song projects and I've I've made sure they fit together. So for example, I'm going to go in here and go in here and you'll see that I have this in song mode, right? And in this first one it goes Pattern one twice, pattern two twice, pattern three twice, and then pattern one at the end. Whereas this one here, right, all this has in it is pattern three. Let's go back to the beginning of this project. It has pattern one twice, pattern two twice, and pattern three twice. But pattern one is blank, pattern two is blank. And pattern three has some piano in it. 
So when I press play on the transport now in AOM, it will start both these song projects off. The tempo is locked to AUM, so it'll play in 120 BPM. So it'll play through this project and this project, right? So here's, here we go. Right. What I need to do is make sure that all of this is turned down and these two are turned up right okay so cool now watch what happens to our trackball across the top as we rewind and Okay, so that should give you a kind of idea of the, the, the crazy powerful stuff you can do with Beat Hawk as AUV3. So let's play around. Also as well, like I said, another brilliant thing is, so for example, with this first project here, if we bring it back up and I bring back up my synth sound, which is just midi up to the MIDI keyboard. If I play this now, so let's just make sure I'm uh, going to stick on pattern. I'm just going to stick on pattern mode for this. Let's find a pattern. Kind of fits in anyway. Look. So all them songs are still playing, right? These are different projects. on this one uh, and then this one okay now if I play my MIDI keyboard now let's bring in that choir get the idea there right so that's it's very cool you can completely use Beatalk as normal inside any AUV3 and the other absolute genius thing that this is let's 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 go in here right let's go in fact let's delete these so we don't really need them now you've had a, a demo of them sort of thing and they're very good on CPU as well, so there's no problem. So we've taken out all our beat hawks. Let's add a fresh beat hawk in here. So audio unit extension, beat hawk, of course. And I will connect it up to the MIDI keyboard. So MIDI inputs will be my little uh, Artoria Keystep 37. And I'll go in here now and open this full screen. Now, this will be a... A default project I'm going to turn the volume down on now so if I go to pad now but I'm going to set up a new project in inside of uh, AUM right so using BTalk as an AUB3 click on this and we'll go new project new project and we're completely blank now we can start adding instruments in but let's just rename this for now right so you can see what i'm talking about and this is how you can build up your multi projects to play like i just played in aum we click on here and we we'll click save project as and we just call this something like um project uh project five Okay, it doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want. We'll call it Project 5. 
uh, save. OK, so now I can start adding stuff to this, even from within AU, uh, AUM. It doesn't matter. Right. So as long as I'm on track, there's your patterns, there's your tracks. On track page, you have the kind of browser volume pan pitch, ADSR, your effects. I mean, if you're using this as an, a, as an AUV3, you'd use AUV3 effects, right? Then you have, you can record in, so you'll it's recording in now. And that's just recorded, but I'm going to cancel that now. Boink. And then you also have sample if there's a sample being used. Okay. So, right. Go to browser. Now, I have all the expansions. Okay. So, they can get very expensive, of course, if you have them all because there's loads. But the sounds are absolutely awesome. So, first of all, I'm just going to use my finger for this. Let us find... Um, something like acoustic drums one of the best acoustic acoustic drum kits on ios drum elements you have a full drum kit here and then you have elements of that kit let's load the full drum kit and i'm going to use this right and i'm just going to hit load bang close this out and it will have loaded it onto this first pad all we need to do i'm going to make some adjustments to this so make it easier to play the full kit, all we need to go is into keyboard mode or pitch mode as it's called on the standalone. And let's just quickly record um, a little bit of a a little bit of a pattern. Okay, so first of all, I want to choose how many bars my pattern wants to be so if we go into pattern you'll see pattern one length well let you can set this anywhere up to 16 so let's set it at four four bars okay and then we can go back to our track view and oh or you could have stayed on pattern it doesn't matter but track view and i'm gonna have this metronome switched on actually i think yeah, it'll be on for recording. This is just your quantization. So you can set up your different resolutions and stuff. I'm going to leave it on quantize because I'm recording in a bit of a drum pattern. Now, you, you can switch on this anytime you like, but just recording a pattern in, I'm just going to use this because I'm only using the one instance, the instance of Beat Hawk. Okay, so I'm just going to hit record. Press stop on that and just find, yeah, high hats. Okay. Let's go back to our pad view and select another pad. Let's go back to track, hit browser. We can stop it here. Or start it there or select our pads from here but i'm on my second pad now anyway so i am going to locate some bass guitars or something or bass deep bass this is brilliant deep bass different instruments synth bass yeah let's just use that i'm going to hit load and Maybe I'll go to my third pad now and choose a, I don't know, a dark, one of the dark atmosphere synths. Okay, so uh, some atmospheres. Cool, that'll do. Load that. I'm going to exit this menu now. So now we have our drums, which we've done a pattern for. Our bass, which I'm going to lower down when I go into pitch and our kind of synthy effect so go to keyboard mode gonna go brilliant i'm just going to record that in so i'm going to go to pattern and i want to copy this pattern to pattern two all right so i'm just going to hit this select this and then hit this and now this is pattern two
if it changes when it comes round. So I'm going to record my drums now, uh, my bass. on pattern one now where there's no bass. Okay. And on and on and on you go build it all patterns right. So we've got this. Let's take this one. Let's copy, select this pad and paste. Okay, so now I'm gonna add in some of this cool synth. So go to pitch mode. Where are we? Or piano mode. Right, cool beans. Now, if I wanted to increase the length of this pattern, I'd just go, right, I'm going to increase the length of this pattern to eight. And now if I play it, this won't cut off after four bars. It's been duplicated. Okay, awesome. Now I can start adding in the synth, but over eight bars. So let's do this. got like a little track built up already let's go in here hit save project okay so let's just close this i'm going to turn the volumes down for these for this next bit right and i'm going to quickly take you over to uh, the standalone version to show you something so we've just made that little track right let's go standalone version now so literally just opened it and you'll see it's opened a project five for us if we go into song now, oops, not song. If we go into here now and go save project, uh, sorry, load project kit, user projects, you will see that project five is there already for us without us having to do anything. And if I look at my patterns, you'll see we'll have three patterns here. And if I play this first pattern, it's what we've just recorded, right? Swap to our next pattern after the last bar. Epic, right? So let's do something else while we're in here. Now we can also do this and you see how easy it is it? It's totally inter totally interchangeable right i am going to go to song mode now and all i need to do now is arrange my song so this first pattern here if i click on it and light and drag it up you'll see it goes over four bars and maybe i want that to repeat well no and um, maybe i want the second one here let's drag that back in to repeat twice we can move this along with our finger here. And then our third pattern, when the synth comes in, let's do this. Let's have that repeat twice. Um, hang on a sec. No, that's already eight. This is already eight bars, right? So you can see that. If you click on any of these patterns here, you'll get a... Re see, at the moment, this here represents the entire project. Three tracks of 16 av available tracks, right? So you can fill up all 16 with different instruments. If I click on this, this is now showing me what's active in track three. So if I play it now, let me play it from, let me go to track three. Just let me place the header here. 
a track header. There we go. So if I play this now, you'll see, and I can mute anything in here as make it part of the song project. So that means I could say, for instance, duplicate any of these, make adjustments to the actual mutes and solos and things like that, and do all, so all sorts of cool stuff. Right, now this has become a song, so... But let's, instead of looking at in here, which is the standalone version, let's go in here, let's go save project, and let's quickly jump back into AUM. Or Cubase, let's jump into Cubasis. So I've just come into Cubasis here. Yeah, I've just come in. So I'm going to literally just bring in an audio unit of um, Pete Hawk. So just go where it, there it is, Pete Hawk, right? Ding. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's look at our song view. Let's load project, user library, projects. Was it? Project 5, yep, I think it was. Going to load all, which means loads the kit and the sequencing. You can just load the kit, but there you go. And now again, if we look at our pattern and I look at, say, song mode, I've got a song going on. If I press play on the transport now inside of Cubasis, you'll probably find it'll sound faster because this is 120 BPM, right? a door within a door <laughs> okay i stopped that oh no no cubasis stops it because it runs out of space it wants to be armed right anyway so that's that here's, a, here's another quick use in, in inside cubasis i'm gonna quickly open a project for you right so i'm gonna go as beat hawk one and beat hawk so i'm gonna open beat hawk this is the first project i played around with and you'll see with this one I've recorded individual tracks, right? So I recorded this first one, then froze it, then recorded the MIDI and for the others as well. So this one sounds like this. We can go into these, of course, and adjust anything we like. Let's get back to uh, AUM. So now we come back into AUM. Let's open this. Let's go with our thing here and go load project kit, user library, projects, and we'll look load at project, which I spelt wrong, project five. We'll load all. And if we go to song mode, you'll see it's remembered the song we just made in the standalone version. Let me just do this. Got, don't forget, I've got the volumes turned down. so. Which one was it? This one? Yeah. Now, if you think about this for a minute, right, what I did with the other one was made sure that I dupe anything that I wanted added, I'd have to add in patterns if it was in complete song mode. So, like if you've got three blank patterns before you want something to come in, when you create a song, create blank patterns. So for example, if I was to put a blank pattern at the at the very end here, so just this, this blank pattern, we know it's only four bars, but we can select it and we can stretch it out inside of, um, you know, we don't have to keep duplicating or doing this kind of thing, although we can do that if we want to, right? So what will happen now? Let's put the playhead here. It'll get to, let's, sorry, let's put the playhead at the beginning of three. It's going to play this pattern number three. Let's put pattern number one there. So this is going to have nothing in it, but you might have another project that you want stuff in. And it will go to 
Pat and one. Right, awesome. So that's just some of the cool stuff you can do. Right, where are we with this? Let's close this. And let's shut that down. Let's open this one up again. Which is just, I would think, playing a pattern. Yeah, it's playing pattern three. Right. Okay, time to look at some sounds before we go. I hope this gives you kind of some inspiration. You can do, it's exactly the same. You can do exactly the same in the standalone as you can with the AUV3 version. And as soon as you make any changes in the standalone version, they'll be reflected in the AUV3 versions, which means that once you open multiple instances, like we've just seen, you can start adding multiple projects or multiple sounds or multiple songs all to play in sync with the host BPM. We saw in Cubase is running it fast. I mean, you could go bonkers, of course. You could go and say, well, okay, what, what if we want a bit of like, bit of that speed for this? Okay. Don't forget, this is just playing the pattern. So. Awesome stuff. Let's go to our pad view. Let's select a blank pad. Let's go back to track. Let's go to browser. And let's just listen to some of the most bonkers cool sounds from any app. I mean, <laughs> using BeatTalk as standalone is awesome. If you're happy with having 16 tracks uh, to build a project, you're absolutely golden. But sometimes you may want more. So, for example, may you have, like, like let's look at this. Look, you may have done something like this. Okay, so we'll go with acoustic drums, drummer. But instead of going full drum kit, we've gone drum elements. Look, so we'll go kick drums. We've got. So I'm going to add that to. Um, in fact, let's put a blank project in. Let's load. Let's close this. Let's go with this. Let's go with new project, new project. Right. So now we've got a blank. A, ca a good case point for using two sets of beat hooks to run a project would be something like this. Let's go and look at our browser and let's choose this drum kit, right? this bass drum. Let's just hit load and we're loading it onto this load, right? So it's that it's on, it's done now. It's on, it's on this, sorry, it's up. It's on that pad done. Let's go to say snare drums and choose the next pad make sure that i did put it on that pad so let's close yeah we'll sort this out in a minute and i'm going to put my snare drum on there so browser doesn't matter for now we'll just go yeah load and uh, let's go to pad number three and put hi-hat closed that one will do is and pad number four, we'll look at hi-hat open, right? We load that. And now we've started to build up our drum kit, right? So let's just go back. So now we have, now this, let's go to our pitch here. Set our pitch to where you want it or play it via Keyboard bowed, go down an octave. Okay, or go back to pad view and set the pitch how you want it to be there. So now it'll be C3. Now here's the thing. Let's just look around here. Go into ADSR and listen. It doesn't sound natural, right? Definitely want to lower that down as uh, its octave as well. I'm going to draw. That'll do. Sounds nice. 
still doesn't sound natural with acoustic drums and stuff let's switch one shot on for all of these now when i just tap it once you're going to get any overhang or over you know overspill of the samples now what we need to do is assign these to here to a choke group okay it's here in the adsr next to one shot you've got four choke groups you can choose from so these none of these are assigned to any choke group Let's assign this hi-hat to choke group one and this hi-hat to assign this to choke group one and this one to choke group one. So both of these are now on choke group one and they're going to choke themselves just like an, a natural hi-hat would. But you may want to fill this up with loads more percussion so you've just got a great big percussion set and then you think, well, I'm going to need to create another project to match this when I'm using it as an AUV3. So you, you get the idea, right? Let's go to this uh, next blank pad and listen to a few of the epic sounds that you get as well. I won't go on much longer now, but uh, just a couple of minutes, just give you an idea. So you have so many great sounds. We have kind of stuff like ambient. We've got drones in different packs. So I'm just going to turn the microphone down and blast through a load of these for you. You do have some effects as well say for example this one or this one let's load that onto that pad and close this so let's go to our keyboard mode don't forget i've got it midied up as well so you do have some onboard effects here But not many. I mean, you get a bit of delay as well. But of course, because this is a UV3, maybe you just want to use the amazing sounds in Pete Hawk. You can add whatever effects you like, you know. So you could go, oh, what's this? Right, I'm going to add in a... Uh, I don't know, an out of space, right? So that's one of the cool things you can do. The other, the other stuff as well, if we go to another blank pad, don't forget you've got 16 pads per project sort of thing. And pads are more like tracks because each pad can be an instrument that's played as well. And a lot of the times you can load a full drum kit on like we have here. Oh no, we, in the other project we had that full drum kit, right? Let's go to another blank pad. Let's go back to here, go to browser. This is full of awesome stuff. You have loops, percussion elements, like in this Asia group, you go to loops, right? Okay, what's this? We've got Cymbalan, Cymbalan loops. And these will all, see how fast it's going, look. If we set our tempo back down to what that is, what is it, around 107, that'll do. That sounds much more natural, right? So they all stretch and match the tempo. And if if you know the key, you could also then just repitch it in semitones down to the key of your... If your track is an in D-sharp major, maybe it's in C. You'd pitch it down one semitone, uh, one, two, three semitones, and you'd be in C, right? Or pitch it up one semitone and you're in E. And that's easy, easy enough to do. So say, for instance, well, let's load that in, that loop. Let's close this. So now you've got this. 
So we've got we picked we've got pitch here. Let's go say down a couple of semitones. Sorry, let's go back to center point here. And then we can go say, well, let's pitch this up on semitone. Or let's pitch it down three. Now you will you hear artifacts and some of these, but once you're in with a once you're in with a mix. So for example, if I was to say, what we got on there? I forgot, I forgot what we got on. Oh yeah, that's synth. So for example, if I go quickly to pattern, let's just set a pattern length of, I don't know, four. Let's go back to, uh, we can stay on pattern if we want. Let's hit accounting and record that in. I messed up at the beginning there, but it don't matter. I could then record in this loop. I'll tap it next time it comes round. I mean, I met I met, messed the time up here as well. But if you want to make adjustments to any mistakes that you make, you can just go into Step Editor and there's my mistake there. And adjust it for in there. I never use Step Editor, uh, hardly ever. I don't feel it needs. So anyway, that's how you kind of do that. Let's quickly look at another pad. It has some amazing pianos. So we've got brass ensembles. You literally have everything. It's really bonkers. <laughs> Guys, if you've watched this video premiere, thank you very, very much. I think you'll agree that it has superpowers, especially when you use it as an AUV3. It's just absolutely brilliant. Um, right, okay, top job, cool beans. Um, I'll play a few more sounds while you say ta to each other. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later. In fact, I will load up the lovely... B3, the B3 is awesome. I load up the lovely B3 and play around with that for a bit. We've got lots of these. Different organs. Oh, I like that one. Just load that and close it and I'll see you later. Ta-da. By the way, I forgot to mention that you can also select here the different sounds in the whatever group you you bought or you're in.